Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Dr. Sin. Today we have with us Dr. Sadir J. Al Rawi, who has been specialized in surgical oncology from Al Zawra Hospital, Dubai. Let's welcome him to the program. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you for inviting me today. Firstly, we would like to know more about you. I'm Dr. Sadir Rawi. I'm the Chief of Surgical Oncology Services at the Zahra Cancer Center in Dubai, in the center of Dubai. I've been, been working here for a month. I mm -hmm. just moved from Tawam Hospital, which is the previous multidisciplinary cancer center in Abu Dhabi Alain. So now, could you just tell us the definition of cancer, what it is actually? That's a difficult question, and but it's a very common question that everybody asks about it every now and then. However, cancer is, is a form of a growth of cells of parts of the body in an aberrant way that mm -hmm. is doesn't belong to the standard a growth pattern that is need in like double double growth within a short period of time and in excessive and out of control and that will create a form of masses or any abnormality mm -hmm. that create this be behaving a bizarre oh, in way okay. so how can we diagnose cancer early the the system of screening of cancer is going all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the best screening program in the world is from the United States, which we, tra we, we trained in. Uh, for every organ, there's a special way of screening uh, of cancer to detect, screen, uh, to detect the cancer early. Like uh, typically cancer colon, any patient above uh, age of 50, mm -hmm. uh, he has to get first colonoscopy for him. Okay. A uh, patient who have family history of colon cancer should have been, been 10 years prior to the relative who had the cancer. Like if age by 50 he had got cancer, his relative, he should have by age of 40 should have colonoscopy screening. This okay. is one of the modality. The most common modality of, of screening in the world is the breast screening program that is approved by all health uh, facilities and mm -hmm. health insurance, which is the supply support of having mammogram for every woman above age of 40. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if a family has one of the first degree relative, a sister or mother have a cancer, usually before five to 10 years, before that age that she developed the cancer, the, all the family should be screening the females type. Another screening program, which is very common now, it is we started in United Arab Emirates, uh, is the lung screening program for any smoker or any mm -hmm. patient who have any symptoms should have a CAT scan once uh, in the period of time. Screening of the cervix for the GYN oncology and screening for oral cavity cancers by mouthwash and DNA analysis. These are the most common screening program that's available, especially in high-risk people. Okay. So what are the difference between treatment of cancer in cancer centers versus non-cancer centers? Multidisciplinary uh, approach to a cancer is very important because every case of cancer has been discussed in a multidisciplinary fashion. It means in the presence of surgical oncology, radiation oncology, medical oncology, pathology, radiology, mm -hmm. and all the other ancillary subspecialties, including nutrition, including pain management, palliative care. Rather than a single person make decision about the life of the patient, mm -hmm. whether he may need surgery or chemo radiation, all these people put their uh, heads together to get the best approach and the most good, uh, comfortable approach for the patient and the family, rather than mm -hmm. single unilateral decision in making the decision of that patient. Okay. So now what is the difference between a surgical oncologist and a general surgeon in the treatment of cancer? The general surgeon, he finishes his residency program of surgery. He gets a mm -hmm. little bit exposure of cancer cases. Mm -hmm. And he can handle simple, straightforward cancer cases. But he will not handle, able to handle the most complicated cancer cases. Like, mm -hmm. let's go for example. Treatment of pancreatic and liver cancer, treatment of advanced rectal cancer, treatment of peritoneal malignancy cancer. These cannot be handled by general surgeon okay. who get a little bit exposure. Uh -huh. However, the surgical oncology is who's a person who specialized two years of his career, including basic science and clinical research, mm -hmm. plus clinical attachment to uh, direct vision and management of multiple cancers in a cancer accredited program. Okay. In the United States, we have only 13 cancer accredited program okay. for training of these people. Every uh -huh. year, we have only 40% graduated 
with about 5,000 applicants. So they took the best of the people to handle the cancer and they graduate them. Mm -hmm. After that one, he will put under supervision for about three to five years of treatment and then they will let to go to the community mm -hmm. and to the, uh, like, uh, uh, to, the, to the academic program to treat cancer. That okay. is the difference between uh -huh. such a person and such a person. That doesn't mean that a general surgeon cannot treat cancer, but difficult cases should be handled by a tertiary referral center and by a, a person who's experienced in handling cancer. So now what does the uh, term multidisciplinary mean? Multidisciplinary, as I said, that whenever we sit to discuss a case of a cancer, we sit with the mm -hmm. surgical oncology who's specialized, radiation oncology who's specialized in treatment of radiation to the cancer patient, the medical oncology who will give the, all the options and the protocol for the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. plus in addition to the radiology department who will look to every single case by x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, and all the investigation, plus the pathology department who will look to the, all the pathological slides of how to get the best diagnosis. Okay. Whenever we have dispute about something, we will get second opinion, mm -hmm. or we send some pictures or some slides to an international center to get their opinion, or we can go on Skype, discussion with them about mm -hmm. these difficult cases to get the best approach for the patient. Okay, so uh, how do we predict cancer survival? The cancer survival depends on the biology of the cancer and the stage of the cancer. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the biology. Every cancer has different biology, and even the same cancer may have really different uh, genetic behavior of the, patholo of the pathology. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, a woman with a breast cancer, high-grade versus low-grade estrogen and progesterone receptors, her to no positive or negative, all these will detect the biology of the behavior and the, of the tumor and the response to the treatment. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, uh, chemotherapy, whether it will be beneficial versus no chemotherapy, hormonal treatment for the breast cancer. In addition to that, it is the stage of the tumor. If the tumor is just confined to the breast itself, but because the stage one, stage two, going to the lymph node or going to the distant organ, including mm -hmm. liver or lung. However, there is no end of treatment of the cancer. Uh, people just come to me, I'm stage four, do you mean I'm going to die? That is not. We are as a surgical oncology, 70% of my job is treatment stage three and stage mm -hmm. four. Usually stage one and stage two mm -hmm. is taken by the people who are the general surgeon or the cancer surgeon. But stage three and stage four, these are the cancer cases that come to us all the time asking for second opinion or third opinion, fourth opinion. Okay. So now what are the challenges that you have faced in your career? There are different challenges in different places. When we are in England, we are, I'm a trained double FRCS from England, consultant in Royal Free Hospital, London, uh, uh, in, in, for a long time. Uh, the, the referral patient and the type of the patient mm -hmm. is different from the United States. In academic program, the challenge is different from the private program. And also you come here, it is in the Middle East, the challenges are different. From the patient referral, to the patient satisfaction, mm -hmm. to the patient confidence with the center and the doctor, and to the looking for your qualification and credentials. Mm -hmm. But at this point, there is no patient who doesn't know what's the internet. Immediately, 70% to 80% of the patient, they cruise my, my bibliography in the internet before they come to me and ask mm -hmm. me about something that I have done in England or in America or in Middle East. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is, is how to convince the patient to get the best treatment and when he starts trusting you about the treatment, the most important, the way I tell the patient, I am really looking in your eyes rather than looking in anything else about you. Mm -hmm. We need to give you the best treatment all the time rather than we give you the commercial treatment that some people th think just do the surgery and let you go. This is part of challenges. Okay. The other challenges is the referral pattern. Different places have different referral pattern. Like people may have... Uh, low economic status, they may have difficult to come to uh, big centers. But in general, we are here in a Zahra Hospital, we are open door policy, mm -hmm. accepting any second opinion, 95% of the insurance. People have no insurance as a charity, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And also we are really looking for the best and treatment for the patient. Okay. What are the method of cancer uh, follow-up? 
any patient who would have treated for a cancer or we are in the process of treatment and investigation, we should have a regular follow-up according to mm -hmm. the NCCN guideline, which is the American Standard, okay. National Comprehensive Cancer Network. Like, let's go for For colon cancer, once we treat the patient with colon cancer, mm -hmm. we follow with him, with the, with the surgeon, uh, every three months visit for the first year. During okay. these three months, we will do blood tests, including uh, blood uh, tests for the cancer mm -hmm. marker. We do CAT scan every six months, and we do PET scan, which is a positron emitting tomography for his all his body a yearly. Mm -hmm. And then for the second year, we move it from three months to six months. And then after that, on a yearly basis. Okay. After five years, the standard, usually we, we patient did five years, mean his survival normal. Mm -hmm. He can go out, go back to his primary care, or he can still continue follow up. Okay. Usually here, we tell the patient, because the system of a primary care is not well matured here as in the United States, we stay, stay with your surgeon, mm -hmm. or we can refer him to a primary care that is really in contact with the surgeon to follow this patient. Any okay. abnormality in the, his test, it should be flagged back again to the medical oncology and radiation and surgical oncology, mm -hmm. and if we need, we can put him again in the multidisciplinary team approach. Okay. So what are the advices that you usually give to the patients who approach to you? The, the best advice is... First of all, we start screening program mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as early as possible, according to the standard of every country. In Europe, in America, and now in the United Arab Emirates, we have standardized the age for screening, the procedure for screening. Whenever the patient have any of these, should seek advice by a doctor, where he to refer him to a, a, a general surgeon, and if you have any really difficulty in any of these issues, should not delay the treatment of the patient, for a few months, she should come immediately to a multi-speciality center or referral center to have an advice about what's the best treatment for him. Okay. Based on the diagnosis and early staging of the, any tumor, that's the best treatment for the patient. Okay. Rather than waiting for advance or deteriorating of the patient condition, and he will be transferred to, to any tertiary referral cancer center. Okay. So, early treatment, early education, mm -hmm screening the program, healthiness of the patient, mm -hmm. and this is the best approach how to you really uh, to treat cancer early. So, doctor, you will have to do a radi radiation therapy for the cancer patients, right? The so, uh, how harmful it is? The modalities of treatment, from surgery, this is a, the mainstay, but there are certain tumors that we don't treat it by surgery, okay. like lymphoma. The only surgical part of lymphoma is, is biopsy, mm -hmm. or put a port for the patient. Other modalities still with the chemo and radiation. The chemotherapy, which is a major modality for this type of treatment, in addition to the solid organ treatment, which is, could be adjuvant or neoadjuvant, mean prior to the surgery, after surgery, these will be explained by the medical oncology. He will sit with the patient after confirming the diagnosis, give him the pros and the cons of each chemotherapy, the duration, the problems, when he's going to be strong, when he's going to be weak, what side effect the patient is going to lose the hair, mm -hmm. or the patient is going to be tired, fatigue, problem, bowel problems, diarrhea, constipations, and all these symptoms are going to be explained to him. Mm -hmm. And then the most important, the, the duration of that treatment, how many months, six months, or eight months, or one year, or five years. In addition to that, the, addition, the additional certain treatment, like for, let's say, for rectal cancer, mm -hmm. we give it sandwich therapy between chemo radiation prior to the surgery mm -hmm. for six weeks, a rest for one month or two, one month and a half, followed by surgery, mm -hmm. and based on the pathology result, we're going to choose additional chemotherapy or no chemotherapy. Okay. So, Dr. that was nice talking to you. Thanks a lot for being here. It's a pleasure. Nice, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. So, that was Dr. Sadi J. Al-Rabu with us. Until we meet next time, this is me, Nana, signing off. Take care.